Today, we will show you the hidden world of a nation veiled in secrecy, where stories of unimaginable struggles, resilience, and diabolical atrocities lie behind closed borders. This video will uncover the chilling truths that have long been concealed. We are about to reveal North Korea's roller coaster of secrecy and madness. You will be stunned to watch the stuff they don't want you to know, from jaw dropping atrocities to the sinister. And indeed, this will be a terrifying reality for you. So, let's get started. Centuries ago, the Kingdom of Korea existed as an enigma, earning the epithet the Hermit Kingdom, owing to its secluded position and distinctive geography, which set it apart from the rest of Asia. Today, the Republic of Korea, often called South Korea or the ROK, has undergone a remarkable transformation, emerging as a dynamic and economically prosperous nation in Asia and potentially globally. South Korea's journey from historical seclusion to contemporary prominence is marked by resilience and development. Breaking free from the shackles of isolation, the nation has become a symbol of progress, boasting a vibrant cultural landscape and a thriving economy. Its metamorphosis is not only a testament to the indomitable spirit of the people, but also to strategic advancements in various sectors. South Korea is a beacon of innovation and technological prowess in the present era. The country has embraced modernity while preserving its rich cultural heritage from bustling metropolises to scenic landscapes. The moniker, the Hermit Kingdom, is now a relic of the past, replaced by a narrative of growth, prosperity, and global influence that defines the contemporary republic of Korea. South Korea's impact resonates globally, extending well beyond its borders. Whether through its technologically advanced cars, world-renowned skaters, or the infectious beats of K-pop bands, South Korea captures the attention of audiences worldwide. The country's inhabitants take great pride in having a per capita income that is on par with that of the United States, indicating the wealth that its population experiences. Remarkably, in 2021, South Korea's gross domestic product, GDP, doubled that of Russia, underscoring its economic prowess on the international front. Despite its relatively compact size, covering just over 100,000 square miles, South Korea has skillfully positioned itself as a significant player on the global stage. The nation's success story is not confined to economic achievements alone. Its cultural exports and technological innovations significantly shape a positive and influential image on the world's canvas. South Korea's multifaceted influence showcases a nation that, despite its modest geographic footprint, stands tall as a critical player in the interconnected and dynamic landscape of the global community. Unfortunately, the stark economic disparities between North and South Korea clearly show their contrasting fortunes. Situated on the northern portion of the Korean Peninsula in North Korea, sometimes referred to as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea (DPRK), is an actual hermit state. The nation's limited interactions with the external world contribute to its ongoing struggle with poverty and underdevelopment, particularly outside its capital, Pyongyang. As of 2015, North Korea's estimated annual per capita income staggered at a mere $1,700, underscoring the vast economic divide between the two Koreas. A closer look at the GDP figures in 2013 accentuates this divergence with North Korea's economic output significantly trailing behind its southern counterpart. The consequences of political isolation and a regime focusing on military priorities have left North Korea in a challenging economic position. Meanwhile, South Korea's robust economy and global engagement have pushed it to the forefront of technological advancements and economic prosperity. This stark economic dichotomy serves as a poignant reminder of the divergent paths these two nations have taken since their division, leaving North Korea grappling with financial hardships. At the same time, its southern counterpart flourishes on the world stage. The leadership of North Korea under Kim Jong-un has garnered global attention for its totalitarian rule and focus on military strength. North Korea has invested heavily in developing nuclear weapons, funding these programs through various criminal activities, including narcotics trade, weapons supply to terrorist groups, and even involvement in prostitution rings. The international community views North Korea as a pariah, with few nations willing to engage with it. The regime goes to extreme lengths to maintain control, carrying out assassinations of defectors and political opponents, both within its borders and abroad. 
1948, the enigmatic leadership of North Korea began to take shape with the ascent of Kim Il-sung, a seasoned North Korean communist. The support of Soviet government, then led by Joseph Stalin, facilitated his rise to power. The roots of North Korea's distinctive leadership structure originate in this pivotal moment. The year 1950 marked a critical turning point when Kim Il-sung initiated the Korean War, driven by the ambition to unify the divided Korean peninsula under his rule. Despite the ultimate failure of the war to achieve its unification goal, it played a crucial role in solidifying Kim Il-sung's grip on power. The conflict set the stage for the consolidation of authority and the establishment of a leadership style that would define North Korea for decades. Kim Il-sung's leadership was marked by political cunning and ideological fervor, creating a cult of personality around him. The Soviet-backed leader navigated the complexities of the Cold War era and managed to maintain control over North Korea. His legacy would extend beyond his time, influencing the leadership styles of his successors, including his son Kim Jong-il and grandson Kim Jong-un. The roots planted in 1948 and the subsequent events during the Korean War shaped North Korea's political landscape, forming a leadership structure that remains enigmatic and distinctive on the global stage. After the Korean War, Kim Il-sung, the founding leader of North Korea, forged an eccentric cult of personality. Presenting himself as a quasi-divine figure, he wove a narrative intricately connected to sacred mountains and legendary campaigns against Japanese occupation. This elaborate storytelling became a pivotal element of North Korean ideology, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's collective consciousness. Kim Il-sung's portrayal as a figure with divine connections added an extraordinary layer to his leadership. The narrative depicted him as a hero who led campaigns against Japanese occupiers and linked him to the essence of sacred mountains, fostering an aura of mythical grandeur around his persona. This cult of personality extended beyond Kim Il-sung to encompass his entire family, establishing a dynastic regime that persists today. The narrative surrounding the Kim family became a cornerstone of North Korean identity, shaping the way citizens perceive their leaders and their place in the world. In North Korea, the intricacies of social standing are encapsulated within the Songbun classification system, providing a unique lens through which to understand the country's social structure. This system divides the population into distinct categories, core, wavering, and hostile, each carrying profound consequences for individuals and their families contingent upon their perceived loyalty to the ruling regime. At the apex of the hierarchy are the core individuals deemed most loyal to the regime. This privileged group enjoys preferential treatment in terms of education, employment, and overall societal benefits. In contrast, those classified as wavering find themselves in a precarious position as their loyalty is uncertain. The repercussions for this middle category range from limited opportunities to potential social ostracization. The most severe consequences are reserved for those labeled as hostile. This group faces systematic discrimination and is often subjected to punitive measures, including restricted access to education and employment opportunities. Families associated with individuals classified as hostile also bear the brunt of societal disdain, further deepening the impact of this rigid social structure. The Songbun classification system, while ostensibly framed around loyalty to the regime, also introduces elements of racial and social prejudice. The design reinforces a hierarchical order that permeates various aspects of daily life in North Korea, shaping the destinies of individuals and their families based on their perceived allegiance to the ruling powers. This unique social structure is a defining feature of North Korean society, reflecting the regime's firm control over its populace. During the four harrowing years from 1994 to 1998, North Korea confronted a catastrophic famine that exacted a toll of suffering and death. The estimated death toll during this period ranged from 300,000 to a staggering 3 million, exposing the severity of the crisis that gripped the nation. Faced with the alarming humanitarian crisis, the dear leader Kim Jong-il was compelled to take an unprecedented step. Despite the long-standing historical animosity between North Korea and the United States, Kim Jong-il reluctantly acknowledged the gravity of the situation and decided to accept food aid from the United States. This decision significantly departed from the usual diplomatic dynamics between the two nations. The desperate need for sustenance transcended political differences, highlighting the severity of the famine that had left the North Korean population in dire straits. 
the acceptance of food aid became a crucial lifeline for countless individuals who were grappling with hunger and the threat of starvation. In the face of such adversity, the famine of 1994 through 1998 not only exposed the vulnerability of North Korea's food security, but prompted an unexpected collaboration between geopolitical adversaries. The acceptance of aid underscored the human cost of the crisis, emphasizing the urgency of addressing humanitarian concerns over political disagreements. North Korea's leadership, both past and present, exerts unwavering control over the nation through a stringent set of foundational rules imposed on its citizens. The core of these regulations is an insistence on absolute loyalty to the Kim family, emphasizing a cult-like reverence for the leaders. This unyielding loyalty extends to accepting hereditary secessions, solidifying the family's dynastic rule. Citizens are indoctrinated to adhere fervently to the revolutionary thought propagated by the ruling regime. This extreme ideology serves as the cornerstone of North Korea's political landscape, shaping the collective mindset of its people. The dissemination of the ideology is carefully orchestrated, permeating various aspects of daily life, from education to media, ensuring a uniform adherence to the prescribed beliefs. The emphasis on hereditary secessions further consolidates power within the Kim family, perpetuating a dynastic leadership structure. The notion of a divine right to rule is deeply ingrained, creating an environment where dissent is discouraged and met with severe consequences. This iron grip on power, sustained through these foundational rules, perpetuates a regime characterized by control, fear, and the suppression of individual autonomy. In this tightly controlled environment, the Kim family's rule remains unchallenged, and the populace is bound by a set of principles that dictate their actions and shape their thoughts. The foundational practices, emphasizing loyalty, revolutionary ideas, and hereditary secession serve as the bedrock of North Korea's political structure, allowing the leadership to maintain a formidable hold on the nation. In 2011, upon the death of Kim Jong-il, North Korea grappled with a paradoxical reality. While the global stage witnessed an international display of grief and mourning, those residing within the nation face severe consequences for failing to exhibit sufficient sorrow or feigning emotions. The regime, tightly entwined with the Kim family, has meticulously crafted an environment where genuine dissent is a problematic endeavor, giving rise to an undercurrent of suppressed anger and disgust that only a brave few are willing to voice openly. The pervasive system designed to maintain control has subjected the citizens of North Korea to extensive brainwashing. Despite the authority of grief and anger occasionally glimpsed on television, a palpable fear lingers among the populace. Expressing discontent through spoken words or facial expressions carries the implicit risk of severe repercussions. This unspoken anxiety adds a layer to the already intricate web of control and surveillance that characterizes the North Korean regime. Defectors who have escaped this tightly regulated environment affirm the authenticity of the emotions displayed globally. However, even beyond the borders, the lingering fear of reprisal silences the broader narrative of discontent. The Kim's family's firm grip on power not only dictates the visible emotions of mourning, but also dictates the boundaries of permissible expression, creating an oppressive atmosphere that leaves the genuine sentiments of the North Korean people largely unheard. In the oppressive environment of North Korea, tales of compassion and resilience break through the silence. Dr. Sanduk Ruit, a compassionate Nepalese eye surgeon, aimed to bring vision back to those suffering from cataracts, a widespread ailment in economically disadvantaged nations. The straightforward nature of the surgery starkly contrasts the stark reality of limited medical access in countries like North Korea. Ruit's humanitarian initiative managed to secure approval from the DPRK government, allowing him to conduct cataract surgeries. This act bestowed the precious gift of sight upon individuals deprived of it for years, some since childhood. However, in a twist reflective of the regime's pervasive influence, the gratitude expressed by those whose vision was restored is directed towards the supreme leader, Kim Jong-il. The credit for this miraculous transformation is attributed to the regime, highlighting the extent of control exerted over the narrative and the people's sentiments. In a society where dissent is brutal, even acts of compassion become woven into the complex fabric of a regime-driven reality, where loyalty to the leader is ingrained even in moments of profound human connection. Venturing beyond the facade of orchestrated grief, the consequences of dissent in North Korea are dire. Arbitrary arrests can happen at any time or place, with the police under no obligation to provide reasons. Even individuals within the ruling class are not immune. 
finding themselves confined to cramped cells in prisons or local jails. Former inmates and escapees describe a grim reality where sleep deprivation, beatings, deliberate starvation, and more constitute the routine. The dehumanization of prisoners is further exacerbated by indoctrined guards who view them as enemies of the state. The journey through this process, which can span days, weeks, or even months, culminates in the classification of crimes and placement in either political prisons or re-education camps. Within these camps, torture becomes a pervasive element of daily life, taking various forms, including psychological torment that distorts reality. Women, in particular, are vulnerable to sexual assault, and some even face the harrowing prospect of giving birth within the confines of these brutal institutions. Despite the challenges faced by the people of North Korea, their stories reveal a complex tapestry of suffering, resilience, and the enduring impact of a system that permeates every aspect of their lives. Share your thoughts, and remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more terrifying stories and secrets.